Hello there everybody, how you doing? It's your old pal Cape Joel back here again on the DC Fan Channel and you know what that means? It's yet another very special day and that's because I am going to be talking to you about DC Nation Zero issue number one. The DC Fan Channel was very nice to provide me with a copy. You can pick up one yourself at any great comic book store for the low low price of 25 cents which I thought was actually a very cool idea. I know uh a lot of people were probably out for free comic book day. I was. Would have been a great time to pick one up for almost free. Now, DC Nation number zero actually has a lot in common with something like uh, DC Rebirth Universe issue number one. And that is that it is, you know, a promotional material. It's an anthology story. It's three stories, in fact, all to get you hyped up and get you up to speed on everything that's going to be coming from DC Comics in July. And uh, the first story that we have in here is a Tom King Batman-centric story, only it's not focusing on Batman, it's focusing on the Joker. And again, a very different sort of Joker that we've seen from Tom King. He, of course, wrote him previously in War of Jokes and Riddles. He's writing him again here now, and this Joker is also different from the Joker that we saw in Snyder's Dark Knight's Metal. Now, could this be connected to that whole three Jokers thing they've been talking about since DC Rebirth? I surely don't know. All I know is that the Joker is here in this story. He's absolutely terrifying looking because he's drawn by Clay Man, and they're definitely, you know, going for something new and different with the Joker here. He more or less spends the entirety of the story terrorizing this poor dude named Roger because in his sick, twisted mind, he's sure, he's just sure that he's going to be getting an invitation to Batman and Catwoman's wedding. How does Joker know about Batman and Catwoman's wedding? Why did he think he would get an invitation at all? Why has he come here? Because he's crazy, that's why. And that's pretty much the entirety of the story. The second one is a Superman-centric story, and a very special Superman-centric story, too. This one comes to us courtesy of Brian Michael Bendis, who is going to be taking over not only Superman, but Action Comics. And this issue is giving us a little look into what Action Comics from Brian Michael Bendis is going to look like. And it's going to be a workplace procedural, actually. We're going to be spending a lot more time at the Daily Planet, although the Daily Planet is in the middle of something of a seismic shift right now. Uh, we get a very cool speech from Perry White, probably my favorite thing in the story, as he, you know, tries to, you know, inspire his workforce, you know, really get them, uh, really get them motivated. He says, you know, good journalism is in short supply in this day and age. Good journalists are coming under attack more and more for their work, and you know, he's absolutely right. That's something very topical and drawn from the headlines Brian Michael Bendis is doing. But the other big thing that's affecting the Daily Planet is the fact that, you know, one of their stalwarts, one of their mainstays Lois Lane for some reason is not there anymore she has seemingly quit the planet which is absolutely nuts but moreover than that she seems to be in the outs with Clark Clark doesn't want to talk about what's going on there I really man that hit me hard because you know the status quo we've been enjoying post uh Tomasi and post Jurgens has just been so good with them living together as a family and John and everything I would hate that uh, Brian Michael Bendis would break them up and would try and, you know, affect that status quo. I'm not saying he did. Again, these are vertical slices. We don't know where any of this is going yet, but, mm, man, if that's if that's what you're doing for, you know, your first issue, for your first thing going in there, upsetting the apple cart like that, I don't know, man. Then again, this is Brian Michael Bendis, and there is a good chance that he could be messing with us, and he could be, you know, trying to, you know, divert your attention, but, hey... That's something we got going on there. There's also a new person joining the Daily Planet team, Robinson Good from Star City. Hey, Robinson Good, Robin Good, Robin Hood from Star City, where their hero is a guy who wears a green hood and acts like Robin Hood. Oh, oh, Bendis, I see what you done did there. My English degree allowed me to see what you did there. She is a big fan of Superman. She's also a really big fan of Clark Kent. You know, she says that his work really inspired her in journalism. But, oh, can she be trusted? Is she what she seems? Probably not, because this is comics and that's the way those things work. But, yeah, there's your taste of what action comics is potentially going to look like under Bendis. And the final story, and probably the one that I was most excited about, was Justice League No Justice 
from Scott Snyder. Of course, you know, ever since the Source Wall got broken at the end of Dark Knight's Metal, uh, the cosmic scene in the DC Universe has gone absolutely nuts. There's all sorts of horrors broken out free now, and it's not enough for the Justice League. They need to grow their ranks bigger than they've ever been built before, and each team uh, takes a name from one of the different cosmic forces. So you got Team Entropy, Team Mystery, Team Wisdom, and Team Wonder, and they're all made up of not only some of your favorite heroes, but some of your favorite villains as well filling out the ranks. Uh, again, this is just more or less a story that gets you uh, up to speed on who the teams are and what you can expect. We don't really know much more beyond that, but, you know, the artwork here was definitely pretty solid as well. Uh, I don't know what to expect from Justice League No Justice. I know I haven't exactly been the biggest fan of the last few uh, Justice League runs. Uh, Hitch, I felt kind of incomprehensible and impenetrable. Christopher Priest was good, but it was a lot smaller and a lot more focused and a lot more down to earth. Not everyone's cup of tea. This definitely looks to be like Scott Snyder is trying to return to a more classic status quo for Justice League and trying to make it a must read book again and an important book to read for those who are interested in what's actually going on in the greater universe of the DC comics. So, you know, there, there's DC Nation, everybody. Three vertical slices of some books that, you know, try to get you excited for some stuff if you're not reading, but I figure, you know, between Bendis' Superman, Tom King's Batman, and Scott Snyder's Justice League, I don't think they needed to try very hard to get you excited to read these if you're not already reading them. But there you go, everyone. That's DC Nation Zero. Thanks again to the DC Fan Channel for allowing me to come and talk to you. As always, this has been Kate Jill. Thank you so much for listening. You can find me over on my own channel for more comic book reviews. And until we meet again, everyone, bye bye